Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture number 16 of the course on statistics and probability. Students, today is the 16th lecture and the beginning of the second part of this course. As I mentioned in the very first lecture, the first 15 or so lectures were concerned with descriptive statistics. The next 15 are going to be concerned with probability theory and the last 15 will pertain to inferential statistics. So, pehle pandra lecturon ke doran aapne mukhtalif techniques seekhi of summarizing and describing data, data that you collect on sample basis. Hamari uh, zyada tar discussion um, univariate situation ke hawale se thi jis mein hum ek hi single variable ke ko describe kar rahe the in different ways and in case of a quantitative variable we discussed at length the frequency distribution of the variable and its uh, shape its spread and its measure of central tendency also in the last lecture I discussed with you a very important concept and that was regression and correlation when we try to relate two variables with each other. I hope that you enjoyed learning the various concepts that were discussed in the first part of the course and I hope that you will enjoy probability theory as much if not more. Aap kahenge ke ये क्या ये मुमकिन है कि प्रोबेबिलिटी जैसे मुश्किल कांसेप्ट को हम एंजॉय कर सके उससे ज्यादा तो मुश्किल कोई कांसेप्ट ही नहीं है एक्चुअली स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज नॉट द केस दिस इज एन इंप्रेशन दैट इज ऑल अराउंड दैट इट इज सपोज टू बी द मोस्ट डिफिकल्ट टॉपिक द ओनली थिंग इज दैट यू नीड टू हैव अ मेथोडोलॉजिकल अप्रोच अगर आप उसको एक सिस्टमैटिक तरीके से अप्रोच करेंगे तो आप देखेंगे कि इट इज नॉट रियली दैट डिफिकल्ट एंड इन फैक्ट इट इज क्वाइट इंजॉयबल इन दिस पार्ट ऑफ द कोर्स वी विल बिगिन विद द बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ प्रॉबिलिटी एंड वी विल गो ऑन टू डिस्कस डिस्क्रीट एंड कंटिन्यूस प्रॉबिलिटी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इन पर्टिकुलर वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग द बायोमियल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन the hypergeometric and the Poisson distributions and also the most important distribution in statistical theory, the normal distribution. So let us begin with the very basics. Sabse pehle probability ki definition thodi si discuss kar lete hai. Um, what do you understand by the word probability? I'm sure that you will reply that when we are talking about chance, that's what we mean by probability. That we are talking about how much chance is, 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 how much chance is. Yes, it is like this. In the next few lectures, you will see that there are various ways in which you can define probability. We have the classical definition. We have the relative frequency definition and then we also have the subjective or the personalistic definition of probability. These sub definitions we will discuss after one after one after one. And you will realize that the most important one from the statistical point of view is not the subjective, not the, even the classical, but the relative frequency definition of probability. Because this is the definition that pertains to real life phenomena and also a definition which enables you to quantify probability. Yani, aap uh, number form mein express kar sakte hain ke, for example, partic ek particular event ki probability 75% hai, ek or event ki probability 55% hai. Um, इन चीजों को हम इन डिटेल इन पंद्रह लेक्चरों के दौरान डिस्कस करेंगे बट टुडे वी हैव टू स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द 
very basics. And students, the first thing that we will discuss in this regard is set theory. Uh, it will simply be a review of what you have already studied. And the reason why we are going to discuss it is that, as you will see later, there are a number of concepts of probability theory which are facilitated by the use of set theory. Yani set theory ke zariye hum kai concepts ko badi asani ke saath explain kar sakte hain. Let us start from the definition of a set. As you all know, a set is a well-defined collection or list of distinct objects, for example, a group of students, the books in a library, the integers between 1 and 100, all human beings on earth, etc., etc. Its definition may, I use two words, well-defined collection of objects and distinct objects. In dono se kya murad hai? Well-defined se matlab hai that I should be absolutely clear as to whether a particular object belongs to or not belongs to a particular set. Or distinct se yehi murad hai ke any particular element or object should appear in that set once and only once. Students, uh, the set itself is denoted by a capital letter, usually, just such as capital A, capital B, capital C. And the elements in the set are denoted by small letters. As you see in the examples on the screen, the set A could be consisting of small a, small b, small c, and small d. And the set capital B may consist of the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 7. The number of elements in a set A, this is denoted by n a and it is called the number of the set a as you see on the screen if a set consists of four elements then we will say that the number of this set is four and we will write n a is equal to four if x is an element of a set a we write x belongs to a and if x does not belong to a then we write it with the same notation but crossing on the notation to denote that x does not belong to a. As you can appreciate, a set can have um, any number of elements and if a set does not have even a s one single element, it is called an empty set or a null set and it is denoted by the Greek letter phi. But students, Please note that the set consisting of the element 0 is not a null set because it contains one element and that is 0. In fact, if a set contains only one element, we say that it is a unit set or a singleton set. But students, yahan ye bhi note kare ke agar ek element x ki baat kar rahe hain, so, uske gird hum parenthesis ya bracket nahi dalenge. But if we are talking about a set containing one element x, then we will be putting the parenthesis around the letter x, as you now see on the screen. A set may be specified in two ways. The first is called the roster method. And in this method, we give a list of all the elements of a set. For example, if we throw a die, our set of all possible outcomes consists of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And if we toss a coin, our set consists of head and tail. The other method is called the set builder method or the rule method. And in this method, we state a rule that enables us to determine whether or not a given object is a member of our set. For example, if we write that A is 
the set of all x values such that x is an odd number and x is less than 12. This means that we are talking about the set 1, 3, 5, 7, 9 and 11. Speaking of sets, it should be kept in mind that the repetition of an element or the change of order of the elements in a set does not alter the set. Meaning that if I write 1, 3, 5, that is the same set as 5, 3, 1 or 5, 1, 3. The size of a set is given by the number of elements present in it. The number n a, in other words, denotes the size of a set. This number may be finite or infinite. A set is finite when it contains a finite number of elements. Otherwise, it is called an infinite set. The empty set is regarded as a finite set. Examples of finite sets would be the set A of uh, consisting of all the positive integers from 1 to 100, the set B consisting of x values where x represents a month of the year, C representing those x values which represent um, printing mistakes in a book and D representing those x values which represent living citizens of Pakistan. In tamam examples mein aap uh, agree karenge ke we are talking about finite sets because number of living citizens of Pakistan is not an infinite number. Number of uh, mistakes in a book cannot be an infinite number and so on. On the other hand, examples of infinite sets are the set of even integers or the set of all real numbers between 0 and 1, including 0 and 1, or the set of points on a line, or the set of the sentences in the English language. Of course, it can be argued that the number of sentences in the English language is not an infinite number. But the point to understand is that sometimes if the set or if a population is very, very large, so large that for practical purposes we can regard it as infinite, then we do adopt this strategy. On the other hand, in the first three examples, it is obvious that they are really infinite sets because the total number of even integers or the number of real numbers, all the real numbers between 0 and 1 or the number of points on a line, they cannot be regarded as finite entities. Ye char example jo maine abhi aapko diye, aap isme ye note karenge ke jo pehle teen examples the, the set of uh, all points on a line or the set of even integers or the set of all numbers between 0 and 1 inclusive, ye to waqai infinite hain because they, you can simply not uh, count them as finite uh, uh, entities. Lekin jo last example tha, the set of all uh, sentences of the English language, usme to argue kiya ja sakta hai ke it cannot be an inf infinite number truly speaking. To is hawale se mein ye kehna chahti hoon ke sometimes when uh, the, uh, sets or samples or populations, if they are, they are so large that for all practical purposes they can be regarded as infinite, then we do adopt this uh, concept. A set that consists of some elements of another set is called a subset of that set. If B is a subset of A, then every member of set B is also a member 
of set A. For example, if set A consists of the elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 10 and B consists of 1, 3 and 5, then B is a subset of A. In other words, B is contained in A. Speaking of subsets, it should be noted that every set is regarded as a subset of itself and the null set phi is regarded as a subset of every set. Two sets A and B are equal or identical if and only if they contain exactly the same elements. In other words, set A is equal to set B if and only if A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A. Speaking of subsets, we also need to differentiate between the proper subset and the improper subset. As you see on the screen, if a set B contains some but not all of the elements of another set A, while A contains each element of B, in other words, if B is contained in A and B is unequal to A, then the set B is defined to be a proper subset of A. A very important concept is that of the universal set. That set of which all other sets are subsets is called the universal set. As you now see on the screen, it is the set which contains all possible elements under consideration. It is also called the space and it is denoted by either by capital S or by capital Omega. An interesting question is how many subsets can a set have? As you see on the screen, a set S containing n elements will produce a totality of 2 raised to n subsets including the set S and the null set phi. For example, if we consider the set A consisting of the numbers 1, 2 and 3, this set will contain, uh, it will generate 2 raised to 3 that is 8 subsets and these subsets are phi, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3 and 1, 2, 3. In the context of set theory, a very important and useful concept is that of the Venn diagram. A diagram that represents sets by circular regions, parts of circular regions or their complements with respect to a rectangle representing the space S is called a Venn diagram. The Venn diagrams are used to represent sets and subsets in a pictorial way and to verify the relationship among the sets and the subsets. A simple Venn diagram is of the form that you now see on the screen and the one that you see at this time pertains to disjoint sets, those two which do not have any element in common. On the contrary, if there are two sets A and B such that they have a few elements in common, then the Venn diagram is of the form that you now see on the screen. The next concept that we must concentrate on is the concept of operations that can be performed on sets. Sets can be combined in order to form new sets and the four main operations that we should consider are union, intersection, complementation and set difference. The union or sum of two sets A and B means the set of all elements that belong to at least one of the sets a and B. 
that is a union b is the set of all those x values which belong either to a or to b. For example, if set a consists of the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 while set b consists of 3, 4, 5, 6 then a union b consists of the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Or ye jo nea set bana 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 students aap note karenge ke it is fulfilling the basic property that I just mentioned in terms of union. Kyunki agar aap is set ke elements ko dekhe to some of them belong to A but not to B, some of them belong to B but not to A and two of them belong to both A and B. So we can say that the elements of these uh, of this set belong to at least one of the two basic sets A and B. The intersection of two sets A and B means that set in which the elements belong to both A and B. For example, if set A consists of 1, 2, 3, 4 and set B consists of 3, 4, 5 and 6, then A intersection B is the set of the elements 3 and 4 as these are the two elements which belong to both A and B. Two sets A and B are defined to be disjoint or mutually exclusive or non-overlapping when they have no elements in common. That is, the intersection of the two sets is the null set phi. For example, if set A consists of all possible outcomes of a die, that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 and set B consists of all possible outcomes when we throw a coin that is head and tail then students it is obvious that these are disjoint sets in the sense that they have no element in common. The difference of two sets A and B denoted by A minus B is the set of all elements of A which do not belong to B. Representing this point by the Venn diagram that you now see on the screen, the shaded area of the set A represents the set A minus B because it is all those elements of A which do not belong to B. And the last concept in this regard is that of complementation. The particular difference S minus A, that is the set of all those elements of S which do not belong to A is called the complement of A and it is denoted either by A bar or by A C. Symbolically, a bar is the set of all those x values which belong to S but which do not belong to A. In the Venn diagram that you now see, the shaded portion of the universal set S represents the complement of A because it contains all those elements which are not contained in A. The next important point to be considered is the algebra of sets and this is that part of set theory which provides us with a number of laws that enable us to solve a number of problems. The first law is the commutative law and as you now see on the screen it is given by A union B is equal to B union A and a intersection B is equal to B intersection A. I think that you will agree that uh, this law is quite self-evident. Zahir hai ke aapne A aur B ka agar union lena hai, to aapne unko ikatha karna hai. 
तो अगर आप ए यूनियन बी कहें या बी यूनियन ए कहें इट इज़ वन एंड द सेम थिंग एंड द सेम होल्ड्स फॉर इंटरसेक्शन द नेक्स्ट लॉ इज द एसोसिएटिव लॉ एंड इट स्टेट्स दैट ए यूनियन बी यूनियन सी इज द सेम थिंग एज ए यूनियन बी यूनियन सी एंड सिमिलरली फॉर इंटरसेक्शन द डिस्ट्रीब्यूटिव लॉ इज गिवन बाय ए इंटरसेक्शन बी यूनियन सी इज इक्वल टू ए इंटरसेक्शन बी यूनियन ए इंटरसेक्शन सी ऑल्सो ए यूनियन बी इंटरसेक्शन सी इज इक्वल टू ए यूनियन बी इंटरसेक्शन ए यूनियन सी स्टूडेंट्स इस लॉ को याद रखने का आसान तरीका ये है कि आप ऑर्डिनरी मल्टीप्लिकेशन और एडिशन का एग्जाम्पल अपने जहन में रखें वेन वी राइट ए इन टू बी प्लस सी वी नो दैट इट इज इक्वल टू ए इन टू बी प्लस ए इन टू सी इसी तरह से अगर आप इसको देखेंगे तो यू विल सी दैट इट इज एग्जैक्टली द सेम पैटर्न the idempotent law is extremely obvious a union a is equal to a and a intersection a is also equal to a the identity laws are a union s is equal to s a intersection s is equal to a a union phi is a and a intersection phi इज इक्वल टू फाइव ये जो आइडेंटिटी लॉज मैंने अभी आपके सामने रखी अगर आपको इसमें किसी किस्म का भी डाउट हो तो आई वुड लाइक टू इंकरेज यू टू ड्रॉ द वेन डायग्राम एंड टू वर्क विद दट योर सेल्फ एंड टू डिसाइड फॉर योर सेल्फ वेदर और नॉट दीज आर करेक्ट सिमिलरली वी हैव सम अदर लॉज एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन द कॉम्प्लीमेंटेशन लॉज आर गिवन बाय a union a bar is equal to s a intersection a bar is equal to 5 a double bar is equal to a s bar is equal to 5 and phi bar is equal to s also we have the de morgan's laws and these are given by a union b whole bar is equal to a bar intersection b bar and a intersection b whole bar is equal to a bar union b bar once again uh, it is very simple to verify all these laws aap kuch uh, numerical examples le lijiye take examples of sets which contain various numbers and then verify each and every one of these laws the next concept is that of the partition of a set and as you now see on the screen a partition of a set s is a subdivision of the set into non empty subsets that are disjoint and exhaustive that is their union is the set s itself this implies that a i intersection a j is equal to phi where i is unequal to j and a1 union a2 union a3 so on up to an is equal to s let me explain this to you with the help of an example consider the set of all possible outcomes when we throw a die and that is 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 now if i a uh, partition this set into three parts in such a way that the first part consists of the elements 1 2 the second part consists of 3 4 and the last part consists of 5 6 students this is a partition of the set s into three parts and it fulfills the formal definition that i just presented to you the union of the three sets 1 2 3 4 and 5 6 is equal to the big set 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And every one of these three sets is mutually exclusive. 1, 2 is different from 3, 4 and 3, 4 is different from 5, 6. And there is no part of any of these three sets which is overlapping with any other set. The next concept is that of the class of sets. By a class of sets, I mean a set of sets. For example, if you consider the set of lines, this is a class of sets because each line itself is a set of points. The class of all subsets of a set A is called the power set of A and it is denoted by P of A. For example, if A is the set head and tail, then the power set is given by the null set phi, the set H, the set T and the set H T. Aapko yaad hoga ke ab se kuch ter pehle maine aap se kaha tha ke if a set consists of n elements, then the total number of subsets that it can produce is 2 raised to n. Or vahaan pe bhi humne ek example consider ki thi. To abhi jo definition di, uske tehet, us example mein jo set consider kiya tha of the 2 raised to n subsets of the set, that set was also a power set. Another very important and interesting concept is that of the Cartesian product of sets. As you now see on the screen, the Cartesian product of sets A and B denoted by A cross B is a set that contains all ordered pairs X, Y where X belongs to A and Y belongs to B. For example, if the set A consists of H, T and the set B consists of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6, then the Cartesian product A cross B is the set of the ordered pairs H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6, T1, T2, T3, T4, T5 and T6. Is silsle me important point ye hai ke in general A cross B is not the same thing as B cross A. Because if you consider the graph in which X is on the X axis and Y is on the Y axis, you will readily agree that 1 comma 2 is not the same point as 2 comma 1. Students, I have discussed with you the basic concepts of set theory, which I am sure that many of you are already familiar with. But it is good to revise and to refresh them in your mind because as you will see in the forthcoming lectures, uh, this theory will be very, very useful for us when we talk about probability and a number of probabilistic problems. Another important um, mathematical theory which we will be using in solving probabilistic problems is the theory of counting rules. There are three rules that enable us to solve a number of problems in a convenient manner and these are the rule of multiple multiplication, the rule of permutations and the rule of combinations and I will pick them up one by one. As you now see on the screen, the rule of multiplication is stated as follows. If a compound experiment consists of two experiments such that the first experiment has exactly m distinct outcomes and corresponding to each outcome of the first experiment, there can be n distinct outcomes of the second one, then the compound experiment has exactly 
MN outcomes. Students, ये rule इतना मुश्किल नहीं है जितना कि आपको महसूस हुआ. In fact, it is extremely simple. Let me explain it to you with the help of an example. Let's go back to exactly the same one that we discussed a short while ago. Um, one set consisting of HT and the other one consisting of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. I'm sure that you have realized that realize kar liya hoga ke this is the case of tossing a coin as well as tossing a die. The coin can result in two possible outcomes, head and tail, and so M is equal to 2. And the die can result in six possible outcomes, and so N is equal to 6. Now, according to the multiplication rule, the total number of ways in which this compound experiment can be performed is m into n. So, in this case, it is 2 into 6 and that is 12. And students, uh, as you will remember, 12 is exactly the number of ordered pairs that we had when we considered this example earlier. As you now see on the screen, the 12 ordered pairs are H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6, T1, T2, T3, T4, T5 and T6. Ye jo example humne abhi discuss kiya, isme we considered two simple experiments being performed together to give us the compound experiment. But students, this can be extended to any number of uh, simple experiments which are being conducted together to give us the compound experiment. And the other point is that this rule of multiplication, ya multiplication theorem ye jo hai, this is also called the rule of multiple choice. And the example that I will now uh, consider and discuss with you will portray this point clearly. As you now see on the screen, suppose that a restaurant offers three types of soups, four types of sandwiches and two types of desserts. Then a customer can order any one out of 3 into 4 into 2, that is 24 different meals. Ye to bohat hi zada delicious example tha aur meri tarah aapke muh mein bhi paani bhara ya hoga. Lekin um, restaurant to hum baad mein jayenge. Let us consider the points that I just conveyed to you. Dekhye, is mein teen simple experiment hai. The choosing of one soup out of the three possible choices, the choosing of one sandwich out of the four possible sandwiches and the choosing of one dessert out of two. Isse aap ko convey ho gaya hoga why this rule is also called the rule of multiple choice. Dusri baat ke jaisa mene kaha ke isme teen simple experiments hai. Uh, the choosing of the soup, the choosing of the sandwich and the choosing of the dessert. So, we are extending the initial rule MN to the case of three experiments and we are now applying the rule M into N into P where M is the number of ways of choosing a soup, N is the number of ways of choosing a sandwich and P is the number of ways of choosing a dessert. Let us consider another very interesting example. Suppose that we have a combination lock on which there are eight rings. In how many ways can the lock be adjusted? Yani, a combination lock ki baat ho rahi hai, jis tarah ke aaj kal suitcases par bhi aksar hote hai. And this lock has eight positions and we are trying to determine how many different ways in which we can adjust or set this lock in order to lock the suitcase. Up students, 
इस प्रॉब्लम को हम किस तरह से अप्रोच करेंगे देखिए द लॉजिकल वे टू गो अबाउट एट इज टू थिंक ऑफ द एट पोजिशन एंड टू रियलाइज दैट फॉर एनी वन ऑफ दोज एट पोजिशन इट कैन बी फिल्ड इन टेन डिफरेंट वेज इसलिए कि देर आर टेन डिजिट्स फ्राम जीरो टू नाइन और जो पहली पोजिशन है उस पर भी जीरो टू नाइन कोई भी डिजिट हम रख सकते हैं सेम फॉर द सेकेंड पोजिशन सेम फॉर द थर्ड एंड सेम फॉर द एथ सो इफ वी अप्लाई द रूल ऑफ मल्टीप्लीकेशन वी फाइंड एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन दैट द टोटल नंबर ऑफ वेज ऑफ डूइंग दिस इज टेन इंटू टेन इंटू टेन एंड सो ऑन सो दैट द आंसर इज वन हंड्रेड मिलियन कैन यू इमेजिन वन हंड्रेड मिलियन वेज ऑफ एडजस्टिंग दैट लॉक ऑन योर सूट केस वन हंड्रेड मिलियन यानी दस करोड़ एंड द फॉर्मूला इन दिस केस वेन ऑल एट पोजिशन हैव द सेम नंबर ऑफ पॉसिबल वेज ऑफ बींग सेट द फॉर्मूला कैन बी सिंपली स्टेटेड एज टेन रेज टू एट टेन इंटू टेन इंटू टेन एट टाइम्स लेकिन फंडामेंटली इट इज द सेम रूल दैट आई हैव बिन डिस्कसिंग फॉर द पास्ट फ्यू मिनट्स द रूल ऑफ मल्टीप्लीकेशन स्टूडेंट्स दिस ब्रिंग्स अस टू द एंड ऑफ टूडेज लेक्चर एंड इन द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर आई विल डिस्कस विद यू द अदर टू वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रूल्स विच इनेबल अस टू सॉल्व अ नंबर ऑफ प्रॉब्लम्स इन प्रॉबिलिटी थेरी the rule of permutation and the rule of combination after that we will proceed to the real thing itself and that is probability until next time my best wishes to you and allah hafiz